In order to do work that falls under the umbrella of data science, you need three things. Uh, the first is a good problem. The second is some good data. And the third is some programming language or infrastructure, something that lets you apply that data to solving that problem. Uh, so the first place I would start is to start by poking around on the web and seeing what data you can find. Uh, there's a lot of data out there that's freely available. You can use things like Scraper Wiki and Selector Gadget to go to a website you admire and start pulling the content out, uh, though do be careful not to violate their terms of service. Uh, and then you can start thinking about the problems you can solve with that data. So for people who want to start getting into data journalism, uh, the best way to start is uh, well, first, just by um, you know meeting people in that community. So there's the what used to be called the R Meetup, but uh, is now called the Data Hackers Meetup. It's really friendly. Uh, the talks are often at an introductory level. So the last talk was actually given by Mike Durer, who is one of my colleagues here at Bitly. It was an introduction to visualizing data uh, with D3.js. The video's online. It's really great. Um, but just go there and start to meet people who share a common interest, um, because then you can start to work on ideas and projects with them. And I guarantee you that uh, it's also much easier than you think. When you're beginning, it's a good idea to have a buddy. Um, just in the same way, it's a good idea to have a gym buddy, like someone to keep you thinking about it and not let you slack off. Uh, it's. You can do a lot of great work by yourself. You can also do a lot of great work uh, in groups. And you know, as we've built out our data team at Bitly, we've certainly tried to find people who have very complementary skills. So data science really is the kind of new field where no single component of it is new in any way, but the combination of components is very new. So there are a couple of master's programs that are starting to emerge that address this field, but still it's really open to anyone from any background who's really thoughtful about data. And you can pick and choose the way you get into it. So if you're interested in learning Python, there's a Python tutorial called Learn Python the Hard Way. Uh, you can buy it online, or I think it's even online for free. And you can start learning how to manipulate uh, values in code. And then you can also go read something like Bishop's Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning Al Algorithms book, and you can get a sense of the mathematics required. And then it sort of falls to you to combine the two, um, get some data, and start playing with it. You do not have to be a math whiz by any means to work with data. Um, in fact, the data will often tell you what stories you can find in it. Uh, and there's an old technique called doing a tour of data, where you sort of make a scatter plot of your data on different dimensions, and you just sit back with a bowl of popcorn, and you look at it till something looks weird. Uh, and most mathematic mathematicians won't tell you this, but really the best tool for finding something interesting in your data is uh, your own intuition about it. Uh, and it's really your own ability to say, OK, I think this is kind of an interesting story. Um, and one example I can give you there is that we found that um, like people who like the sport of racing also read a lot of articles about the pope. Right? And that's kind of a funny correlation. Um, we also found that people who like racing like cars, right? That's not funny, that's not interesting, we already knew that. Um, but again, it's the, the human that says, okay, this is something that I think people will want to hear. Data analysis is a very creative discipline, and I know that that's counterintuitive, especially when the stereotype is a bunch of nerds with glasses and pocket protectors, you know, drawing equations on the whiteboard, and we do a little bit of that. Uh, but the most interesting data analysis that we do is actually not fancy math. It's usually coming up with a good question and having the means to find the answer. And more often than not, the answer is something really simple.